Hello everyone, welcome yourselves back to the next episode of the weekly sports show. Of course, welcome back to the channel as well. Just these episodes now going up to the end to the finale. They're gonna be quick reactions and just yeah, a quick in-depth look of what um the day brought. You know, four games, two games at 3 p.m., two games at 7 p.m. And I'm only gonna be able to obviously watch one of each unless I'm on two monitors, but you know, you won't be able to get the full experience. So I watched Senegal v Ecuador, and obviously I did not watch the Netherlands <coughs> v Qatar because it was an obvious game in a sense, and obviously they didn't really capitalize the way I thought they would. And then you had England v Wales and then USA Iran. So subscribe like as always and enjoy the video. <coughs> So starting off Ecuador v Senegal, a very, very good game between the two teams. I would have loved to have seen either of them gone through. They put their whole bodies on the line. But the biggest issue was, you know, Senegal went 1-0 up with a penalty, which <clears throat> I think was very soft in my opinion. Um, Ecuador equalized. And then like, a minute or two later, Kudabai got the winner. Um, uh, when you've got players like Mendy, Kudabai and Saar and Jerisa, uh, Adrisa guy pushing you forward. You're always gonna have that edge. I mean, the Ecuadorian striker is a great striker, but you know when you've got one player, you're never gonna reach your heights. But Senegal went the full way, and they will face the winner of the match. I will talk about in a minute. Netherlands, <coughs> you know, Cody Gapko has scored a hat trick of goals in a sense. Perfect hat trick, scoring a header, left foot, and a right footed goal in all three games. A player who will most likely be playing for United come end of January, and I'm not going to get my hopes up about him yet. Yes, you're scoring against Qatar and all these little uh, international teams. <clears throat> but can he do it in the Premier League? Uh, it's a question that you can't have an opinion on yet, unless you're Erling Haaland, who you know will be successful wherever he goes. But it's not talking about him today. We're talking about Gapko. Brilliant player, you know, from what I've seen. Um, Depay being very lacklustre this tournament. But uh, nevertheless, they won 2-0. And, you know, they'll obviously move on to the next stage and play the winner of Group B, you know, the England <laughs> bunch. Uh, obviously, I didn't see it. I saw Gapko's goal, a great goal, but again, poor defending. Uh, nevertheless, nothing taken away from Cody. He did very good and made the best of what he could. And Qatar are just a disgrace to football because they lost all three games and they are the hosts. And they should never be allowed to be in a World Cup again because they just can't play football. Um, stepping into the next group of, as I said, Iran v USA. I did not watch it, but I know I saw the goal with Dest crossing it into Pulisic. A great goal that resulted in Pulisic getting a tiny injury that he got up from. Um... But of course, USA advanced. It ran out, and they did. They did good around, you know, in places, beating Wales. <clears throat> but after watching the England Wales game, it was a very, very close game between the two of them in the first half. Uh, Bale taken off whatever reason. I must have glanced away because he, he didn't look injured. <clears throat> so I'm intrigued to why you take off your best player, your captain, and the reason why you're at this competition. But again, that's competition for that's it. I talk for another a day when he retires, and we can appreciate this legend, this guy who helped Madrid win so many trophies. He went into um, the trophy with LA, LA this season as well. So <clears throat> random that he got brought off. But the second half became England's not the best performance ever. They were better than Wales. But again, if you're playing like that against Senegal, they will struggle against Senegal. It will be a good game against Senegal. Um, Rashford's free kick, very good. I still think the keeper should have done better. It's like he didn't read the situation too quick. The second goal from Foden, um, again, great move by England, but atrocious defending. No right back covering where Foden ran into, but an easy tap in nevertheless. And does it justify him a place over Saka? I don't know. Um, but I think Foden will start because, again, you don't want to go into the next game, starting other players. You know, Walker was good in bits. Uh, Rashford was obviously brilliant, scored a free kick. His movement was great. Had a couple of poor touches early in the game, but he got into the, into it and got ad adapted. His second goal was, you know, it was shit really, if you think about it. He, he took on the defender, brilliant. Great touch prior to that. And then he had a shot and the keeper just, what is the keeper doing? You know, <laughs> don't, don't sit there and say Rashford was brilliant with his goals because it's two keeping errors you know Foden was a right back in error I get football is all about errors and stuff but you know these three goals could have been avoided you know when you talk about goals being avoided you know if you shoot from 30 yards that's not avoidable but if you if you go around the back and there's no right back and your centre back's relying on that right back being there it's like 
but take another away from England. It's going to be a very tough game on Sunday evening against Senegal. The Netherlands will face the USA. Another tough game. Netherlands will struggle, in my opinion. And I think USA could surprise a few people because technically on the ball, they are fantastic. And so they have some great players. Netherlands are very good and they need to isolate Capco. It's simple as that. But bringing in the likes of Wilson, giving Phillips and Arnold a run out was brilliant. Looks like Gallagher and Ben White will not see the day. Uh, the light of day in this tournament. Madison probably will not see it as well. I, 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 in my opinion, he has no right to because he's missed the entire group stage and not for his own fault he's been injured. But I'm sorry, but if you're going to the bench and need people to be coming on, you have to have people who have played in the World Cup games. Mason Mount, uh, Saka, Rashford, Foden, Grealish, Wilson. Uh, it's going to be Henderson, Rice, Bellingham, all these people, your fullbacks, Trippier, Walker, Arnold. So, you know, Gallagher, Madison, they're not going to see... I mean, Madison may, but in my opinion, he shouldn't because you're throwing him into a place where he's not hes not match fit. He's not ready for these high-intensity games, and Senegal will be on it from the get-go. They will give England a game, and then you've got France possibly in the next round, and then Brazil or whoever's after that. So England have a very, very hard route regardless. Senegal is no pushover. They have some great Premier League players and championship player in SAR, and I think ultimately, um, either if we finish second, Netherlands may have been an easier option in many ways, because Senegal will want this more, it's a simple case of that, Netherlands you can exploit certain players, um, and they've been lackluster in, in most of it, apart from Gapco, De Jong, been okay, you know, nothing to write home about. The defense has been a bit shaky at times, but I think Netherlands have nothing to write home about. And I think USA, like I said, will give them a game. I think it'll be a massive upset if, if USA and Senegal go through the two teams that finish second in their groups. But you know, it's football end of the day, and it's England as well. You know, England are notorious for fucking up. Simple as that. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with the games on Saturday at 3 p.m. The Netherlands USA game. And the England game against uh, Senegal on Sunday at 7 p.m. as Wales, Iran, Qatar, and Ecuador leave the competition. Day two of match week three is tomorrow. Stay tuned for those games. And as always, thanks for watching as always. Hope you're enjoying the World Cup. And at this moment in time, who do you think is going to win the World Cup? Going off what I've seen from match day three, and obviously I need to see him back in action again, my prediction is currently France, simply because of how lethal Kylian Mbappe is. Brazil, yeah, cool. They're not in conceding as much, <clears throat> not at all. But they just don't have much going forward either, considering how much firepower they should. And Neymar, you can talk about him all he wants, but he goes to the first game, he's injured in the second game, and now he's going to be here for the third and final game against Korea. So stay tuned for those games coming soon. I am excited for some of the bigger games, obviously. So stick around for more, and goodbye.